everybody. Welcome to Tadaima Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpinito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Zapeda. Irishai Masa Hisashi Buddy, motherfuckers. I mean, we were just here last week, but all right. And Colin yeah. Sparling. <laughs> New Terrace House! Ah! It's time. Screaming. Okay, Colin, I need you to put your shirt back on. <laughs> and stop yeah. twisting Why your, are nipples? You your nipples. I like wore this we... shirt specifically so I could tear it off. <laughs> <laughs> Hulkamania is live in effect for Terrace House Tokyo 2019 2020. Is that 2020. A... Colin, is that a Terrace House tattoo? On your... <laughs> across your entire chest? <laughs> on your forehead? Hold on. Yeah, I, Guys, I wasn't forever? kidding when I said Mizuki is best girl, okay? Guys. Dude, someone should get a tattoo of um, Shohei crying, that famous Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Of him bawling his eyes out. Oh, so like good. right on the tramp stamp area. <laughs> Dude, oh, he, yeah. he is the Terrace House equivalent of the epic cry meme. Kind of, yeah. Total. Total. Yes. Uh, the, it's Shohei instead. <laughs> the excitement's real here, everyone. Today we're ramping up our coverage of Tokyo 2019, 2020. The brand it's finally new, time. Brand new season of Terrace House. Uh, we know it's been going on in Japan, but out here in America, we can't watch it. But we will be able to on September 10th. That's about two weeks from now. Actually, two weeks yes. from this episode going live is when we can finally binge the first part of Terrace House, all 12 episodes of it. Woo! Man. So that is confirmed then it's 12, there are 12 episode parts now? From what I've seen, yes. Yeah, okay. Breathing Get intensifies. Ready. Yeah. Holy Heavy crap. Breathing. Which, which <laughs> does mean, of course, that the wait for part two will be longer because we're waiting for another 12, uh, probably 12 yikes. episodes. Are you guys, this isn't to you, this is to the people listening. Oh. Are you going to binge it or are you going to string it out? Because there's some people, they have a strategy to get them through the lull, right? They'll like do it little by little by little and wait. But me, it's hard to just not keep watching Terrace House mm. if I know there's more episodes out there. I don't have the self-discipline. See, I do. But I have to for the show. I do this thing where I watch the 12th episode and then try to like be a detective and figure out what oh happens that leads to the events that happen in the 12th episode. So what you're saying is Terrace House isn't exciting enough for you. You have to make it a game. Yes. Oh, man. No. <laughs> you know, I had, a, I had an analogy no. for this, but I feel like, it, I don't know if it's, if, is it too dark? Should I just say it? I don't know. Uh-oh. Do it. We'll, we'll cut it in po- okay. post media res if we need to. Like media <laughs> <Okay>. res. <laughs> so if you hear a, a quick silence and then a, 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 a time skip here. So they, it's just like spreading out the episodes of Terrace House. It's kind of like a diabetic spreading out their insulin because insulin is too oh. fucking expensive in this country. <laughs> it's grim dark. <laughs> it's super grim dark. But it's true. It's it is. But it's true. true. Yeah. Insulin prices suck. From Tadaima. That's that's the takeaway for today. No, uh, yeah. we're fighting for the diabetics out there. We definitely are. Um, but it is a serious <laughs> issue for sure. But to swerve back into more lighthearted territory, uh, today we're going to cover the intro interviews of the six, the first six people in the house. For this week's episode, we're going to cover only the girls. Next week, you can look forward to the boys. But Ladies the, first. Exactly. Yes. Um, so here we're going to look at their intro interviews courtesy of Costco subs. Just want to give a quick shout out to them. They've been doing an awesome job. They're the reason we were able to cover the another terrace clips during our opening new doors coverage. And they're currently still the reason we're able to cover these uh, external pre terrace house juicy bits before terrace house 2020 drops for sure. Uh, Dude, juicy really bad too. Flowing. So I feel really bad because there is, I think, a new name also. I just it's escaping my mind on helping Costco subs translate. We'll put it in the description. Oh, Chrissy notes, B. Though, so sorry, that might be it. Chrissy B. Yeah, a lot of these were uh, done by Chrissy B. Coma Goob and Mrs. Chap. So thank you to you, but also just the entire Costco subs team. You guys do amazing work that helps us absorb and enjoy Terrace House more fully. Yeah, You're doing it for the love it. of the game, and it shows. Right. Uh, of course, if you are the kind of person who prefers to go into a new season of Terrace House completely blind, you'll probably want to shut it off here because we're going to talk about the first three girls. We're going to say their names, what they do, what their ages are, and maybe probably throw off some predictions of what we think they might do in the house. So if you want to be completely blind, now is your chance. This is your exit on the highway to the danger zone. Minor spoilers ahead, but I mean, I'm pretty hyped for 
the actual episodes to come out. So I'm okay looking at this stuff because it's not anything in the actual show, right? It's just like the chins and shins scene and then the full on intro interview. So chins this is shins. this is our way of lathering up, so to speak, getting ready for September 10. Yes. So I would just I would just like to preface before we really deep dive. So these intro videos where we were like we get our first quote unquote glance at these new house members. They're, they're not really hiding much anymore in these, are they? Like, like they're just like, hey, you, you, you're missing like an eyeball out of their face at this point. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's it's fine, but it's like, like there were certain scenes where like, like in the third one where they were basically just showing her working out, and it was like, I, you can already see who it is, pretty much. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're uh, they're showing more. They're getting more into their personalities. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I say let's kick things off with, and again, last chance, turn it off now if you don't want to know names, let's kick it off with Kaori Watanabe, the 28-year-old illustrator who only actually recently started being an illustrator. We saw her- Gosh. Hmm. I think that's, it's so cool, like there's an illustrator. I know. I think that's such an interesting career path, and it's, it's often a career path that isn't very straightforward. So hearing how she talked about um, it, she like just got into it. She feels like she's kind of late to the game. She was doing it on the side originally. It's like I, I hear that story a lot on like Twitter. Mm. I was I, waiting for her to be like, I, I'm an illustrator because I tried modeling and didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, no. That would have not been a surprise at all if I heard that. Yeah, not at all. Uh, before we do dive in quickly, I guess I should say all the links are going to be down below in the, in the show notes and or description. So if you want to watch these videos before joining with us, feel free to. Otherwise, yeah, let's dive in. So in the chins and shin shot of Kaori, we see her at some kind of magazine office maybe like there are definitely magazines being thrown around she's showing off some it, illustrations to I, it was messy yeah but that's that's how offices work when you work in the Man, in publishing yeah. industry um she's showing off some of these uh, illustrations to some fashion folks and they're thinking okay like for this issue we're about to do a go our golden week promo where we're going to talk about our girlfriend's birthdays and uh they throw around ideas Kauri is like maybe cute cakes you know other cutesy fluffy happy things you know and I kind of in, like of all the chins and shin shots I can think of, it's one of the better ones because it actually doesn't feel like, I don't know, modeling is going to be involved. It's just like this is a person who really likes what they do and what they do isn't modeling. Yeah. And there's a very visual representation of exactly what they do. Like she had kind of like a little sketch going already of like two people in front of like a really big many tiered birthday cake. And I really like her art style from mm. the very brief glances that we've seen so far. Yeah, it's so stylistic. My my thing is with these with these shots, right? Is that it, it's so funny to me because like you you assume the people that the the this prospective uh, Terrace House member is talking to, they already know, right? That they're going to be on Terrace House. They have to like they they already know, and they act surprised for the camera, like, "Oh, you're moving in next week." And like. Dude, you have a camera in your face. Like, there's yeah, no yeah. way you, you don't gotta know. You got to say, hey, guys, I got to tell you I'm on Terrace House. There's cameras here. Exactly. Like, they set it up. Meet me at this table at this day and time. <laughs> like, you're not fooling anyone, dude. Like, it's strange. Totally yeah. scripted, for sure. But oh, do you, they do have you to think be. They, that they tell them exactly, like, it's going to be Terrace House? Or do you think that they're like, hey, I'm doing a thing for TV? Like, I mean, that maybe they, they could, yeah, they it's could do the that. latter. It's probably, probably that. I don't know. But everyone seems to know Terrace House. Like, no, none of their friends, like, in all the history of the show has been like, what's that? <laughs> They've been like, they know exactly I would love that. what Terrace House is. Yeah, see, that's yeah exactly... wouldn't it be like, what's Terrace House? That would be really funny, actually. That's why I think they all know it's Terrace House, because no one is excited yeah. or surprised. Everyone's very nonplus, like, oh, yeah, Terrace House. Cool. Cool. Uh, when do you, me. I guess, when do you move in? I don't know. Right? Like, it's very <laughs> boring, kind of. Um, <laughs> like, it's usually It's usually pretty Terrace boring. House? Yeah. Uh, but we, this weekend, we do learn that in in just this little three minute clip where we don't even see Kaori's eyes, we learned that she lived in France for a time, which is very cool, yep. and uh, she knows what happened at the end of the last season of Terrace House with the sock incident, oh, and she's very worried that that dude, might happen again. 
Yui's yeah, she, legacy endured and has made an impression on the entire Terrace House community. And I agree. I mean, to walk into a situation where something like that is a potential can be nerve wracking, you know, um, but hopefully we don't see hopefully we see a different kind of drama is my hope for this season. Like, I don't want it to be drama free because I like the drama sometimes, but a different type, maybe not the immature. Mm. Kind yeah, of hopefully drama. it's not a extremely Refreshing drama, extremely yeah. like caddy between the girls like she's prophesizing. One thing I will say, we'll talk about all the girls here as a whole in a minute, but I think that after watching all three of their interviews, they seem to be a little bit more mature than, let's say, the group was at the end of O&D. Early impressions. Maybe. We'll have to see. I, I think we, we can save the holistic girl talk for later, right? Um, so, girl talk. Girl talk. So with Kaori, mm. uh, then we, we cut to the interview, or at least we... You know, there's the other video where it's just a straight up sit down interview with her and I'd assume like some of the producers on Terrace House or something. And uh, they talk a little bit about her job and her love life. So her whole thing as an illustrator came from the fact that she used to do she used to be like a business worker at some company. She, I don't believe she named it, but, you know, just your average office worker. And she drew on the side, published it on social media, and then all of a sudden got some job offers based on those social media posts which is awesome. like that's the dream you know yeah mm -hmm. damn if only that could happen <laughs> when senpai notices you and senpai wants to pay you yes yeah. nice when senpai notices you is there anything there nothing there Set, set, set. Uh, oh, right. oh uh, it took me. Damn. I'm gonna, Damn I'm it. gonna deduct ah. points for that one. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, Ten points from House Robert. Thanks. That bombed. Um, but. I think it's also really cool in that for a while there, she was doing two jobs, right? She was keeping her main office working job along with that illustrator job. And then she kind of came to this personal crossroad where she thought that she doesn't want illustration to be a side gig. She wants it to be her main full-time thing. So she kind of made the leap there, right? Which, you know, I mean, everyone here, I think, has had a little bit of that in their lives of there's this artistic thing I'd like to, you know, pursue, but then there's also this stable Bore, possibly boring job that I have, right? Like when, when can you make that leap, right? Like when is it mm. safe? Is it ever safe? You know? Yeah, I think I think making the move from being an, an average office worker to someone who does illustration on the side and then logistically moving that over into fashion illustration, that's a fucking genius career move, in my opinion. Like, I, I feel like they always need artists and designers in the fashion industry, right? Mm. And so the fact that she was like so much that she got a gig in fashion is awesome. Um, was was the last illustrator or artist of this sort? Was it Lauren? Lauren Sai from Aloha. So. Mm. Lauren Sai Sai okay. for for Aloha State now of Legion fame. Totally yeah. different style, but I'm just trying to think back. Like, did we ever have an illustrator before? And so yeah, this is you know Kaori Kaori. However you're gonna say this name is gonna Ka take me like ten Kaori. times to say it right. Kaori Kaori Kaori. <laughs> Okay. Cowry. 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 If, if it helps, you, you could be very formal with her and just be like, Watanabe-san. Mm -hmm. Watanabe-san. Yes, I, I can say you that. You are not one. on a first name basis. <laughs> I can true. say Watanabe-san. So anyways, I forgot what I was going to say about her. <laughs> her name's <laughs> weird. What her That's what you were going to say. But no, no, it just, I mean, she, she also um, described that she went, you know, she has lived with people before. I think when she was like in high school, mm. is that what she revealed? Yes, yes. Because because the guy, I like the way he looks too in this video. The guy sitting across the table from her coworker, he's got this, I don't know, he's got fun hair and and cool frames, mm. and he's like, "Have you? Can you even live with anyone else or something like that?" She's like, "Yeah, I lived in high school." Um, was that when she said that the only? But she didn't really eat dinner with him every night, right? There was only no. Like, yeah, she said that there was only. Beer and water in the fridge. Well, right. that was when she lived in France because she was still in uh, high school at that okay. time and would yep. probably not have beer in her fridge. Okay, I wonder. Yeah, like I don't the, know if this is Germany. <laughs> I mean, if it were but, Germany, uh, yes. Yeah, but uh, no, I can relate to that too. There's probably just beer and water in my fridge right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. If it's Bud Light, it's just water. It's, it's just, just, it's zing. just water. Zing. Gosh. It is. <laughs> it is, though. No, but, yeah. Uh, no, no one likes to cook, clearly. I'm interested to see what is going to happen. She seems like based on, you know, then we cut away from this scene and we go to her interview and she seems just like a really nice, genuine, fun person. I don't know mm -hmm. when we actually get to see yeah. her face. Yeah. She, um, 
I, I kind of empathize with the way that she's like, I'm kind of worried, you know, like I got into illustrating like much later in life. And now, you know, mm. people are doing very like my peers. They're all getting married and having babies. And I just feel like I'm falling behind. And it's like I, I think a lot of like, you know, 28 somethings like getting into your later 20s can sympathize with that. Yeah. And mm. uh, she I think then as far as love is going to go, she's going to be looking for something much more stable and serious than just like, oh, I think he's kind of cute. And yeah. I, I I, still don't know how I feel about like, is, is Terrace House the best place to do that? To look for, in, in Sana's words, like your last love, like someone that you could see marrying. Yeah, so the, the message of like, I'm going to Terrace House to find love or find a relationship or something like that, it's... It's already been shown in the past several times over. I mean, we have a handful of relationships that are still working. But for the most part, it ends up being a relationship of convenience. Mm. And post-Terrace House, these relationships tend not to last long. Yeah, you're more likely to not have it be a long-term thing. But, I mean, it is a good place to meet interesting, dynamic people. It uh, is. That are mo- that are motivated, that are working hard for the most part. I would say that because she did say that Terrace House is a place where people go and work hard. Yes. And there are certainly some exceptions. Makoto, looking at you. You die. With the eyeball yeah. emoji. You die. Yeah, there are some exceptions. You die. <laughs> but overall, I would say most people are pretty driven and pretty professional in Terrace House, it would seem. Yeah. And I, I, f- I feel like, too, when she says that I want to go to Terrace House to find a relationship, that's a pretty damn extravagant way to want to find a relationship, don't you think? Like, it's kind like, of like that. I, I, you know, I feel like finding a relationship, so I'm going to go on fucking Terrace House of all things. Well, like, it's kind of like that thing where, I mean, it's a phenomenon when you're single and you're an actor or actress and you get cast for a role, what's happening is there's this whole panel and director and producer and this whole group of people that are casting a movie and they need the female, the main female and the main male to have chemistry together. So you're like cast and put into the situation for the very fact that you have chemistry. And if you're single, it happens a lot. I think it happened to that Twilight chick. I can't remember her name. Kristen something. Kristen Stewart. Kristen yeah, Stewart. Yeah. yeah, her and that guy. Like, well, it happens a lot. Like, there's romantic encounters, like, you know, in, in film and stuff. And it, kind of a similar thing applies here to Terrace House. People are put together in a house because they're dynamic and because the producers or the panel, whoever runs Terrace House, Fuji, film, Fuji TV, they're like, well, let's see what happens when these strong personalities come together. So it's almost almost yeah. inevitable that someone's going to like each other. I think it'd be weird if uh, all six people went in and there wasn't one person that liked someone else at all. Yeah. Yeah. Chemistry is important. And we've seen before, like, some some pretty heavy-handed pair-ups, like, with what happened with um, Taka and... Um, Aya. Aya. Mm, yeah, or Aya. Aya. Or Aya. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's that's a good point to you bring up daily. Like you can't force it either. Mm-hmm. You know, it almost seems like the more obvious that the producers try and force something like that, um, the it just doesn't seem to end up well. Burns and Masaki being somewhat of a exception to that. Yeah, I mean, I, like to be fair though, I feel like the Taka thing's a little skewed by the fact that Taka's apparently been in love with this other girl for like years. And I would never knew. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a weird situation overall there. But I think mm-hmm. with Kaori, to bring it back to her, it's, I mean, yes, she's looking for love, but she also just kind of has this uh, vibe of she just wants to be surrounded by very goal oriented people, yeah. which, you know, that's always a, a very motivating atmosphere to be behind, whether you're competitive or not. Very positive. Right. It's just this idea of like, I need to keep up or like. You, you're doing something different and I'm super proud of you for that. I'm going to do something that's in my field that I want you to be equally proud of for me. You know, mm. D- does she seem like she would be a clean type or a messy type? I'm going to vote messy, but think she's clean. Yeah, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to lean messy, too. I just but... think all illustrators are messy. And I'm exactly. sorry to stereotype the whole <laughs> illustrator community, but I just think they have their pencils and their art and everything everywhere. And it's just it's because a lot of equipment because their brain is overflowing with creativity and it's more focused on that rather than just like keeping things in order. I could be totally wrong. I, for the record, suck at drawing. I couldn't even draw a line, a, a house. Yeah, I, I, I can barely draw a stick figure. So hmm. all props. Yeah. Uh, then they asked her a little bit about her love life. Uh, so she was in a relationship until the end of last year 
and has been getting over him slowly but surely. Uh, but she's generally always had this vibe of kind of like a boyfriend is secondary. It'll get in the way of school. It'll get in the way of my job. It'll get in the way of me, my career, right? So she hasn't necessarily always been on the hunt for a boy. Yeah. Did she say she's only had two relationships in her whole life? I believe so. Yeah. It's it's a low number. You know, less experience than that because she's so career focused. You, so right. we'll see. Do you guys think that's a fair assessment that like if you're say like just getting into the workforce or working toward getting into a certain university or something like that, um, that a relationship would distract from that? Um, I think it can. And it just, it, it depends on the dynamic of the relationship mostly. Um, I think a relationship can get in the way no matter what to, to a degree, I'm not saying like it could like more or less, right? Like it's going to play a part in the certain like life choices that you make, at least to some degree. Um, but how intrusive a relationship is on your career and life goals depends on the person you're in a relationship with, depending on who you are, depending on the dynamic. Yeah, I'm going to start with Colin here and that I think it definitely depends on the two people, right? Because right. realistically, no matter what, a serious relationship is going to get in the way of most of your major life changing decisions. But you want to be with that person where even if they do get in the way, you don't see it as that, but you see it as right. what well, can I, I do? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say get in the way. I think get in the way is like a strong phrase. I, th I would say influence is the word yeah, I would use. Because you want to find yeah. that person who who you will think like, okay, cool. If I get this promotion, I have to move cross country, but I also want to be with this person. So let's figure out, are they willing to move with me? Are they willing to do long distance for a bit? Will we figure something out? Like, what can I do? Like with all the information right. I have, what can I do to maintain this relationship that I believe is my last <clears throat> and, hmm. you know, further my career, further my school, further my whatever. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take the opposite opinion on that. And I actually oh. think that, I'm much more kind of calm and even keeled and evened out and more able to focus when I'm in a relationship and I just feel much really? more stable. Yeah. And to me, if I was in college and I was single, the single game and the dating game and the distractions and all the bullshit and all the social media and all that stuff would, I could see that getting totally distracting, like being single and again, dating around in school. That would to me be way take more of a toll on like my studies and my time I'm doing mm. stuff because now I got to go to club and I got to go to the bars and I'm going to go drink and do all the social stuff whereas you, we're yeah. in a relationship you don't have to though you don't have you don't, to though. you don't have to but some people like you know when you get lonely you're just sitting there you're like looking around you're like oh what am I going to do here I mean you know it's just it's just different people to what Robert said yeah I think it affects different people different way for me personally it would be much more distracting if I was single and dating and again yeah. like I, because That's when I'm in a relationship fair. I'm much more of like a homebody Mm -hmm. And I'm like hanging out with my best friend and it's all good. And we're just studying together and we're playing Minecraft on our MacBooks. Like to I be got highly specific there. To be fair. <laughs> now we know you play Minecraft, you fool. No, to be fair. <laughs> I, you fool. I, I you do fool. Say that the active hunt for a spouse and or significant other is way more busy than like 80% of relationships. Of like actually like dating like, a person. Yeah, yeah the dating, the, the finding the right person, the going on a bunch of first dates and trying to worry about, mm. oh, what should I wear? Ugh. Does this bandana make me look like a thug? I don't know. Like, Ugh. you know, there's... <laughs> Robert's got all these bandanas. He's, yeah, it's very true. I, I have like eight of them on my body right now. Am I a crip or a blood yeah. this week? Nope. Oh not my going God. there. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But yeah, Daily, what do you think? Yeah, I, I definitely, I feel like what Cowrie's saying here is that, like, she, she wanted to avoid, like, the dating game, like, like, actively seeking, like, going out to, like, group dates and seeing if she liked someone and, like, messaging back and forth and then having to reject someone or being rejected. Like, that takes up a lot of just, like, actual time and then, like, emotional time. Like, it's kind right. of an emotional burden um, to be, like, putting yourself out there. Um, so I think that can be really really distracting mm -hmm. and yeah and I, I have go ahead Dilly. go ahead oh I was... I've, um i've just always been of the opinion where like the moment that you're like not looking for a relationship is when it happens when it smacks yes. you in the face like like you you can't force it like it just happens and 
for me, that's always happened when I've been like actively like I'm dating myself. I'm not looking for yeah. anyone. And yeah. then it was like, oh, oh but shit. this is really nice. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. You can, I, and to you, like to your point there, Daily, you said you can't force it. Well, damn it. If some people aren't going to try. <laughs> and it never, yeah, ends yeah. Up well. yeah, it never ends up well. To will it into existence. Yeah. I, so as someone who's like in their early 20s and in the midst of pursuing a, a, a career, right? Like I... I'm not act, like I have never actively looking for a relationship, really. Like, I'm not really finding myself being like, I need a girlfriend and I need it now. Like, mm. no, there are apps for that. Happening. There are. Yeah. It's, co- it's actually called I need a girlfriend and I need it, <laughs> I need it now. I need it now. <laughs> and I need it now. JG uh, Wentworth. Um, uh, but it, I say let's let's kind of wrap up here with uh, Kaori. Uh, some of her final bits here is that when she's in love, she finds two patterns. She's either like fully infatuated or she's just talking to the guy and then kind of has this thought of, oh, I might like them. Oh. But either way, she kind of goes head over heels and kind of loses sight of other possibly important things, which I think probably contributes to that idea of getting a boyfriend is so much busy work for her. And is so much like it will it will affect her career only because she probably like kind of gets a little bit of tunnel vision, you know. Did she go into what her type was? I can't remember. Her type is she doesn't care about looks necessarily, but also, of course, they have to be good looking, which I think is probably like 100 percent of all the women on Terrace House and all the guys on Terrace House, too. The ones who say, I don't care about looks. You do. Everyone it's does. Subjective. I mean, good is different. Right. But words. everyone that was right. that came up a lot in these in these interviews it's like mm-hmm. someone was even like oh i think it was haruka who we're about to get to she was like she was um interested in someone and people were like really mm-hmm. him okay what, are you yeah. okay with his face yeah and real quick before we get off kaori 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 um kaori kaori i'll get it kaori <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, I think she said that she wanted someone creative, too. She wants someone I, creative, trustworthy, and sporty. I just wonder, like, I mean, I wonder if, like, creative, how creative people get along. You know, like, two creative minds in a house or what they would collaborate on. I wonder how cool that could be. Yeah, I mean, again, I think that, I mean, this is a cop-out, but it always depends, right? Like, there's some yeah. creative types who... Like, they're the only one who exists. They're a little bit of a narcissist. And they just kind of naturally may not get along with other creative types who are narcissists. But not all yeah. creatives are that way. Getting on this for early first impression, she seems really sincere, really sweet, really nice. I don't see her starting any drama, but we will see. I, s- shall I see. see her having pretty great reactions to drama, though. Well, well, yeah, she's just like, I'm. I'm over here doing my own thing. You guys can, like, do with that shit over there mm-hmm. <laughs> i i could see goes. i could see it like some drama happens in the house and then she makes an illustration of the two or three people arguing and the one that she thinks is bad looks like the devil i want it i want, I that. want it i want that i'm just hoping i mean she's there specifically like she said for like love so i just hope that she does that she doesn't end up kind of like masaki did in ond where like she just goes on a few dates nothing happens and then she kind of leaves too soon mm. i'm hoping that doesn't happen here no, I don't want that to happen to anyone. Yes. Uh, let's move on to Haruka here. Uh, some of her videos were translated by those that we mentioned earlier, but also someone named Heji. Just want to make sure we're giving the credit where credit's due, right? So thank you for that. Um, I'll be honest, this this chins and shin shot of Haruka Okuyama, 24 years old, this got me real excited because she was driving a fucking Corvette. I'm like, I'm like, okay, we're we're getting a, a badass car here. I'm like half expecting yes. Tokyo Drift the, the the theme start to start. But playing. it's an American muscle car. Kudos it is, for and that. I just have this weird thought in my head like, oh, Japanese people hate American cars, but not old uh, Haruka. Yeah, and she like, and, mm. and she knows what she's like talking about, like yeah. the way that she just yes. like pulls into like the service station and it's like the belt squeaking, but I just replaced it. Should I start the engine? Like, can you hear that? I, and she, like, ref- I would have no idea. And she refers to her car as she too, yes. and, <laughs> which is crazy. Like she's hardcore about this car. This is her baby. I do want to point out that when she said, uh, "Oh, I replaced the belt just the other day," the guys are still Ugh. like, "Okay, we'll still replace the belt." I got this real yeah. vibe of like. <laughs> 
okay so she's a woman and doesn't know cars right i guess is that what you're trying to they're trying to like trying well it to just do? seems like weird that you would replace i mean we're getting off of a little tangent here but yeah it, it seems weird that you would replace a belt it would make problems again like oh we'll just pay for it again and it'll fix itself like maybe we're no. treating the <laughs> symptom here not the cause yeah maybe the thing that broke the first belt is still breaking the second belt right uh but either way it just felt very much like oh we're men we know about cars we know more than you do so <laughs> i think yeah. she knows oh, a lot about cars replace the belt yeah um yeah but yeah, she seems very cool, and I just want to point out the name of this this shop she goes into is named Rod Motors, and their slogan, <laughs> I guess, is for more power, which is yes. just very uh, more power. It's just so edgy. Fuck. This is so this is so like uh, Fast and the Furious. I'm Paul Walker. Yeah, man, I got you know two cans of Nas from Rods the other day. <laughs> <You're gonna> fucking, <laughs> fucking right. throw down in the race tonight. Yes. Uh, but then she goes into the back room with these two mechanics, and they're talking for a bit. And this sounds like a different kind of video, but okay, go ahead. And then she takes Whoa. off her shirt now. Um, and uh, she, this is where it she does. reveals that she's going to Terrace House. And I find it funny that she explains the show as that place where you find love and stuff. Yeah. Which I, I, I mean, like, yeah, that's kind of what Terrace House has become, right? Kind of. Many do. One way to sum it up. Yep. Many do. Um. But she goes a little bit into how she feels like she's been really lazy recently and she thinks that going to Terrace House is going to give her motivation, especially by being surrounded by all these other goal-oriented people, which is pretty yeah. similar motivation to Kaori in a way. Um, I and I, I do find it fun that in this, in this scene, she actually speaks very candidly about her agent, about how the agent got her on Terrace House and now she's hoping that after being on Terrace House, her agent will get her more auditions. Which, a good agent. It's yeah. a good gig. I, yeah, I think so it's fair to be upfront about it. Yeah. So I'm guessing. So from this, from the looks of it, the car thing is is more so a hobby than anything else. So it doesn't seem like she wants to be like a mechanic herself or like work. Mm -hmm. in well, anything it's a passion. Cars. It's a love. Yeah. Like she loves driving. Like she said that she works for her car, and she when she makes money, she's right. like, oh, All I can get a full tank of high octane gas, and I can kind of relate to that now. I'm really not trying to flex, but I do have a car that. <laughs> I used to never buy premium fuel because who gives a shit, right? But now I actually have a car that it actually adds like eight to ten horsepower if you put in more uh, mm. the more expensive fuel. So I kind of want to do that. It is way more expensive, but I'm just like, oh, but I can drive fast now up and down the hills, and uh, you know, and it, it's fun. So she's the same way. She's like, I can afford all uh, the expensive gas this time. She can buy tires. She's, I mean, tires are not cheap either, mm -hmm. especially on a Corvette. I mean, the cost of ownership of a Corvette is something that yeah. you know you need to take into account. And some uh, cultural insight here. It is expensive to own a car in Japan, not mm. only because there are very few, like, especially in more city areas, like parking, like everyone relies on public transportation, mm -hmm. but also the maintenance is much higher. Like you have yearly inspections. You like have to, there's a lot more to like getting your license than just like, oh, I'm going to go take the test and maybe mm -hmm. fail it a couple yeah, times. Yeah, you have like, to take that mm -hmm. test every three years. Yeah, it's, and, it's pretty demanding. Mm -hmm. And plus, uh, this is weird for us in the States, but for her, a Corvette is an import car. So all the parts are not necessarily at the ready. They might have to get ordered. You know, they might have that belt on hand, but she might break some weird gasket or some thing and have to special order it from the, from America. So she's driving an import sports car. That is upper echelon. Yes. Yeah. And not to mention. So was that a two door? Was it a two door? It's only two door. <laughs> Corvettes. Are yeah, only two -door. I'm pretty sure Corvettes are only two door. So, yeah, if. I mean, here in America, I don't know how it is in Japan, but your insurance goes up if you're driving a two door also. I'd imagine. I mean, it's a sports car, yeah. too. Yeah. So, right. And it's an import. So it's definitely not a cheap car for her to own. I, man, it's cool. I know something about um, just a young person. Yeah. There we a go. young person driving an um, yeah. American sports car like that is mm -hmm. like a V8. It's just it's just cool. You just don't see it very often. It's it's novel. So I'm really excited so to see where her journey goes in Terrace House. Jack, how many other I, car things do you know besides V8? Car thing? I don't know. A little bit. I know about <laughs> torque. Okay. Okay. I learned about <laughs> torque recently. I'm not a gearhead at all. No, yeah, she, I, she's I, you put definitely the carbonator in the scooter stick with the mm -hmm. uh, the wing dings and the <laughs> wo wo -wo jigger. Mm -hmm. And then I just turn the <laughs> wheel and um... get this shit. When you turn this wheel, it makes the other wheels turn. That's fucking wild. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. But yeah, but, uh... but no, real talk. I hope we get a racing scene. Yeah, that's what uh, I was. That's what I was gonna say. Because <laughs> she she asks the mechanic, like, "Oh, did you sign up for this race or whatever?" Right? And she it was a little vague. But I'm very curious if she herself also races. I'd love to see that. Mm. 
yeah like sh- I think, japanese um, street races kind of right Ooh. like i think kind of getting into her interview a little bit too um like the way that she got into this i think was very interesting it's not like anyone like she was introduced to it by her dad or anything like that she just naturally like would walk by these cars on this highway and be like oh that's a really interesting foreign car and she'd like take a notebook and make notes and be like oh so that's a german car and it's like that's an american car Mm. and like learned that way like very much picked it up on her own she's Mm -hmm. like it's very interesting she's like an old man trapped in a young woman's body because it's like she was like i don't have a lot of friends my age because i like golf and cars and no one can relate to me <laughs> this is an old soul like, yeah. the thing she said really? was a challenge isn't it when she's meeting guys usually they can't keep up with her car talk well, yeah. yeah i mean they're just i feel like there's just not as many gearheads especially in the younger generation i'm assuming she how old is she again 24 she's 24, 24. so like and people our age, I just I don't see as many people that are that interested. I mean, I think it speaks to her character in that in this interview, they talk about why she wants to join Terrace House, wh- what insecurity she has with living with other people, what her relationships are like, what kind of guys she likes. And then they just ask one question about her car. And it's almost a quarter of the interview. Like she just goes on <laughs> and, she on, will go on, and, and on, on and on and on and on about it. Yeah. So is there going to be room? in the garage for her car at the new place because they usually give them a house and automobiles. You tells us. Oh, the I didn't think every episode. Yeah. Is she going to get to park her car there? Who knows? I'd, I'd love to see if she can. But my my main concern is, you know, we we saw Hansan. He entered the house and he wasn't looking for love. He already had a girlfriend, right? In this way, Haruka is kind of entering the house with her own significant other. <laughs> So I'm very yeah. curious to see what kind of dynamic that's going to have. Like, I'd love to see a scene where she's talking to one of the guys who I don't even know who the guys are yet, but she's talking to one of them and she's just like, oh yeah, I just put a new gear in my car. <laughs> so, <laughs> a new gear in my car. <laughs> Robert reveals his level of expertise. <laughs> well, I added one. I went to Walmart and bought a new gear. For my I mean, car. Jack took V8 already. That's like the, the edge of my <laughs> car knowledge. <laughs> um, so oh i don't know she's God. like yeah, i put in this new part in my car and the guys are just like yeah. oh that uh that's yeah cool i think that's cool. cool is that i don't know is that cool here's the thing about her she refers to her car as she but that car's got a name she definitely has named her car and we'll find out what it is oh for sure she's <laughs> gonna introduce everyone she's gonna talk about like their little sister or something like that hello like, this oh, is De- oh desire to <laughs> yeah no this is and they're like oh is that your uh, best friend or your sister i'm like no this is my corvette She's yes. out front. Let's go. Yeah. She's going to want to drive everywhere, too. Mm. Right? Like the yes. common vehicles. Or it's one or the other. She's like, I'm not driving that piece of shit. Yeah. I really wonder how often she's going to want to drive the people in her car, though. Like, I'm curious if she's the kind of person, you know, who's like, you know, no food in my car. You know, don't, you know, I've got Maybe, strict yeah. rules. You can't do this in my car. You know, that kind of thing. And she Dude, probably doesn't fucking... want to drive a car that's automatic either. We'll see. One one of her dates, she's going to take one of the guys in her car, and then she's going to get, like, hit rural Japan somewhere, and they just take off doing, like, fucking Dude. 90, 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And she's going to hit a corner, fucking hit the e-brake. Yeah. It's going to be so oh, good. Yeah. And you're, like, you're going to ah, see the you're gonna see the dude in the passenger screener. seat, like, grabbing the oh shit handle. Yeah. Okay, here. <laughs> I hope for that scene. You know what I'd really love is if they do shoot that, and then they actually have a car where the camera is, like, following her. Like, could you imagine for produ- from a production angle, they would need to hire another good driver to keep up with like keep up with her. i want like, aerial drone fo- yeah yeah, yes. yeah i want aerial drone footage of her drifting around the streets of tokyo hell yeah uh but let's yeah. let's talk about her non-car things that's about it what are those uh, yeah there's not much okay. really that's about it. But, uh, well no so she used to be a model and actress under a different name which i found very interesting because that's a little uh, like hmm Hmm, I have Great. many questions. Why? Why Ravier? would Why you change name? your name? Yeah, well, so that's Googleable, I'm sure, somewhere. Oh, I'm probably. sure someone's already done the research. Probably. I don't, I don't want to burst the bubble just yet. I want to live in this blissful car life for a little bit more. I wonder if her and her Bliss. car are available in any like calendars out that might be out there. Mm. Mm. We'll see. Mm. Uh, yeah, she wants to join Terrace House again for the encouragement of being around other goal goal oriented people, but she's worried most about love triangles, which I think that's a pretty common worry among people joining Terrace House. Mm. So like, I see that a lot. I thought you we were just gonna say among people, well, and I was I mean, like, mm. yeah, I mean, maybe, <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> there was a lot of talk about like I don't cheat on people. 
Mm, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't deal with people yeah. who cheat. And she also, I think people were like, at like, uh, didn't you bring it up earlier, Daily? How people were like, um, really, that guy? Like, she's attracted to people that maybe surprise some people that she knows. Wasn't that her? I think. I don't remember. I think that was, was uh, Risako. Oh, my fault. My fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll get to her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I found she she did also say that she wasn't that into looks. Yeah, yeah. She so I found this interesting. Her type is, and I still can't kind of wrap my head around this. She likes a guy who can lead, but Haruka also likes to lead things herself. So she wants a reliable man that is just as much of an alpha as she is, and has a lot of inner beauty and like themselves. And I wonder. Just, I'm very curious about her history of relationships, like how many fights they had, right? Because she talked about how her last relationship was four years long, and they'd fight every day. Or we talking about Haruka, right? Haruka, yeah. Okay. Well, here's the thing about the kind of guys that she's probably into, right? Like, I'm just guessing here, just based on her interests. She said she's an old soul. She likes golf. She likes cars. You know, she's probably drinking... Uh, you know, old fashions. I can see that too in her personality. But but not would she driving. date a guy? Yeah, no, definitely not. Would she date a guy that is younger than her? Would she date a guy? I feel like she wouldn't even care that much if they were shorter than her, maybe or at the same height. But I feel like she would care if they drove like a shitty car. <laughs> yes, I feel like that would. I feel like breaks. that would bug her. Them's the brakes. Yeah. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I feel like that would bug her. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you drive a Prius. Yay. Yeah, nice. I, like, I think I... I think though what from what it sounds like is she wants a guy that can match or exceed her level of intensity. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like mm-hmm. she wants someone that can just like if she's at an, a 10, she wants him to be at an 11. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So like yeah. I don't think she would she would want anyone that's like quiet or introverted. She wants someone who's like really bombastic and outgoing and extroverted. Wants to have uh, fun. Yeah. And that's what I'm I'm sure that's partially why she was like in a relationship where they butted heads a lot maybe that's like you know because she was going for that sort of person but it maybe not have maybe it wasn't the right one yet i i think she's yeah. totally the type where she butts head with heads with her boyfriend like every night and then the more they keep bumping with each other in terms of argument it just slowly oh. turns into bumping uglies like I hate, oh, I hate uh, you. No, I oh. hate you. No, you're the worst. You're the worst. Mm, 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 kiss, 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 and then sex. <laughs> you just wanted to say bump and ugly on the show. <laughs> thanks for that demonstration, Robert. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thanks for the breakdown. Yeah. Oh man. But I I definitely foresee some issues with Haruka as far as relationships go. I think that I feel like she'll get along with the girls fairly well, but I worry about relationship wise because. You, I hear that a lot where it's like, oh, I want someone to take the lead. Like, I, I don't want to have to be the one to do that. And oftentimes what that translates into is like girls dropping hints. And there's some heavy air quotes here. And it's like, you can't expect people to read your mind. Mm-mm. You you have to be pretty forthcoming. And then it's like, I, I dropped so many hints. Why didn't you pick any of them up? And it's like, I I have no idea what you're talking about. I told about. you telepathically <laughs> to buy me flowers. Yeah. Why didn't you do it? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And then being um, disappointed or upset when those expectations don't get met. I think my main worry with Haruka is that she seems like the kind of person who uh, like doesn't like to take blame for things necessarily. She mentioned how uh, whenever she was in a relationship, she would often try like covet thy neighbor's things, i.e. her girlfriend's boyfriend's. She wouldn't necessarily act on them because she says she would never cheat. But she had also gone out a few times with guys who did not disclose they had a girlfriend. And I'm very curious how much of that is the guy not disclosing it or her just not maybe doing a little bit of homework. Right. Turning a blind eye. Mm. We don't know word one yet about the guys. We'll get there. But we don't know anything yet. But I I can see... Haruka wanted to go on a Corvette date, maybe two or three Corvette dates a Corvette. in the house, the Corvettes. But I just wonder if the guys are going to be like, hell yeah, let's go drive me around your Corvette. Or they're going to be like, that's a little intimidating, man. I don't know if I could be driven around in this awesome sports car. We'll see. She's too strong. Yeah, yeah I wonder. She's boys. Yeah, I, will, I, I wonder what's going to happen there. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. We've never had a girl quite like her with these kind of interests. 
And so I'm, I'm glad for some fresh faces, some fresh personalities. Yeah. I'll say Therefore. so far she's my favorite model actress because of her one yes. hobby that she would ride or die for. It's her bumblebee. I agree. Mm-hmm. She yeah. watched that movie and cried. I'm calling it already. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, she's just looking for someone, for a guy that she can play with their stick shift with. Uh, I, oh okay, my. Robert. Come on, Robert. Robert. I, she, she's going to come in here. Okay, like, I can like, see it on your face now when you're trying to do a dirty pun. I can <laughs> tell. Hey, do, you, do, you, do you guys mind if I hang out, uh, hang all these Fast and Furious posters everywhere? Is that cool? Okay. okay. Let's shift gears, though. Let's uh, go. Ah, ah, hey, ah. Hey, uh, let's go <laughs> into Risa Gotanabe. 21 years old, fitness trainer. So her yes. her chins and shin shot is in Harajuku, Tokyo, where she is in a yoga studio and she's instructing some girls on how to do the yogas and how to do the poses. I don't know she, a damn thing about yoga. But that, I mean, that wasn't really yoga. into their knees, right? Yoga. So that was just crunches. Okay. Yeah. Can I admit something? Hello. You so got kicked I, out I of a yoga this. class for organizing. No, the <laughs> no. <laughs> organizing um, I, watched, the I watched this clip. And I was like, why are they all struggling so hard? Like, it's just a crunch. It's fine. <laughs> and then this morning during like my little mini workout, I was like, oh, I'll try it out. <laughs> and the fact that your feet are off the ground and you're supposed to have, you know, your shins parallel to the ground, you're holding up your legs. Right. And also crunching up. That shit's difficult. It's, it's not as yeah, easy, it's easy as you think. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I ate. I I ate my words, mm-hmm. dude. I get out of breath just tying my shoes every morning, so I'm not even gonna try that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so they they do a little workout. I guess I can't say for sure if it's yoga since I don't know enough about yoga, but it seems it's a lot literally like just it. crunches. It's not yoga. Okay, it fine. looked like uh, were they doing a yoga? Where's was that a I yoga a that was yoga. happening? <laughs> um, now do your vinyasa. And then they did, uh, then the students gather around in like a half circle around her and she tells them, I'm moving to Terrace House. And she's very, the best way I could describe it is she's very ganky. She's very, it's like that Japanese term. She's mm-hmm. just very like happy-go-lucky, yes. very gyaru, right? Like yeah. very, she's always excited about everything. She's always optimistic. Nothing can bring her down. And she's that ray of sunshine in everyone's life. That's the vibe I get from her. Yeah, I... I she was super interesting because you you know I, I i don't know if we've had a have we had a fitness coach before i don't think we have mm-hmm. fitness and i mean io I mean, turned Sina's into one eventually i mean yes yeah, i mean, actually Not became good. one i always became oh, that's became right one. that's right sana sana does it too she only yeah. got like a hand like one or two scenes where she was actually instructing a class she's flexible um mm-hmm. but yeah Har- haruka like doing the class and stuff and everyone was actually pretty excited that she was going to be on terrace house after you know she class was over and yeah um, I wonder if that was a usual thing, though, or if that was like another scene where it was just kind of brought on by the producers. Is this a usual thing where she has like her students gather around her in a half circle? Like, hey, guys, life update. Um, I'm going to be on Terrace House. And, you know, real talk. She seems like the kind of girl who'd do that, though. She's like, hey, guys, yeah, life I would, update. Like, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't put it past her. Um, like, like other than them, like all gathered around it felt like the least forced because everyone seemed like genuinely like oh my god tell well, me yeah. about this yeah i mean they're younger too right mm-hmm. she said that her earlier her youngest students range from what 12 to like 34 i can't remember 12, the exact 34 numbers, yeah. But, yeah but they seem younger in there so i'm sure when she was saying that and they were totally excited because it just seems like the core target demographic for terrace house you know is mm-hmm. who she's talking to yeah definitely i think though like the most interesting bit about haruka which i wasn't expecting at all came during her interview and she was like yeah, so uh, I do parkour, and I'm like, "Excuse me, parkour. you want to run that by me again?" Hardcore, parkour, hardcore, parkour. I was like, "Hardcore, parkour, parkour, um, parkour." And she's like, "Yeah, uh, parkour, parkour. I'm a parkour artist. Parkour is an art, and it's like jumping building to building and doing mm. backflips off of things, and it's like super artistic." And I'm like, "Oh, so she does all this training to do parkour?" I just hope. I mean, parkour is like the thing. Like, all right, you got to start like literally baby steps. You can't mm. just start jumping from rooftop to rooftop because you you can't mess up there, we'll right? Die. No, the, please don't. Like it'll be like the ooh, office. Just, you guys ever see those videos on YouTube of someone with like the GoPro on their head and they're like hanging from like the highest skyscraper? Yeah, it's Shanghai ridiculous. It gives me like so that. much anxiety. Sweaty palms, dude. Yeah, that's brutal. I wonder if she's shit. at that level yet where she's like doing that rooftop stuff. She yeah, people have definitely died from that. She like a lot of people. Yeah, she mentioned she's not very good yet. She only just started doing parkour. Which at that point I had wrote I wrote hardcore parkour in my notes because what else Thank would you do right? Good. 
Good. Um, but yeah, I think it's very like she's doing one of those things where it's very ambitious. She wants to create her own style in parkour. She wants to incorporate Whoa. her own flair, her own flips and acrobatic tricks to make it so like that's the Risako Tanabe school of parkour. Right. She's she wants young. to be the Tony Hawk of parkour. You know, she's only 21. She's young. She's ambitious. All the all the best luck to her. Yes. I just hope she don't get like hurt. It. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for it. I, I just I think when it comes. Go ahead. I just want to see her do it. I just want to see her parkour on, yeah, on the show. Yes. We, we better get some scenes of her parkouring. <laughs> Watch your jump like from the dining room table to like <laughs> <laughs> the island in the kitchen. Hey, hey Risa, could you could you get the cheese grater from the kitchen? Yeah, sure. Whew, jump up on the table. Who then? She oh, really <laughs> wall run. She jumps down. <laughs> she literally jumps down at the top of the stairs to this to the first floor, and it's like you. You know we have stairs, right? Dude, like, I want to see her. I want to see her do like that, like a Darth Maul side flip into the pool. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I want to see that side cartwheel thing. That'd be so badass. Oh my Here's god! Here's the thing, so, though. She would probably do that with the most, like, the most earnest excitement of like, yeah, I'm excited to do that. Let's go. Let's do it. And you just can't help but like smile and pat her head about it. Oh man, Gosh, dude, I just really hope we cute. don't. I really she hope we don't get cute. it. Yes. Yes. Yes, she is. And I really hope we don't get a scene where she messes herself up, though. Like, mm. it kind of has me worried. I'm like, God, it's going to be that scene where she, like, really hurts herself. No. Overall, I have a really good vibe about these three women so far. But I would say that if I had to pick one that might be the oh. fulcrum of drama, oh, on, I guess I'm just. Oh, what? 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 We should probably finish talking about Risiko before we talk about all three. That's what I was going to say. Is right. Re- I think it's Risiko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and maybe it's just because she's the youngest. I, I think it's... There, I don't know. There were... Yeah? They were? There were two red flags for me mm. when it came Ooh. to Risiko. And I, I do agree that she's she seems... She's very genki. She's very upbeat. And I like the energy that she seems like she's going to bring to the house. But she mentioned, um, as far as getting along with people, she worries that she talks too much, mm. which is fine but sometimes that means saying more than you should about something Mm -hmm. and then this quote which i wrote down she but i just can't leave an argument unfinished yep well and it's like do you get to decide when an argument is finished like like how do you decide an argument? i wonder what she means by that because that can i agree with you that can be a red flag but it also could be something where it's like I need there needs to be a res, a resolution to it. Like I can't leave stuff hanging. Mm. You remember how yeah. um, Natsumi at dinner was like, "This is gonna fester." Well, I wonder if Risako means like she can't let things fester, or she's gonna say, "I have to have the last word on everything." Yeah, yeah it's that's, either that's, one of those that's, two that's things. That's kind of my word. I get the yeah, vibe yeah. that it's like that... she wants the last word. I'm hoping not. I'm. I'm we'll see. But like I just said uh, two minutes ago, she. I feel like she might. There might be some drama involved. In yeah, Risako and then she had the that future. that whole thing about like. I, 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 it takes me a while to admit that I'm wrong is what I believe or something along yeah. those lines is what she said. Yeah. And she said like sometimes it, and like, I'll realize I'll, uh, I'm wrong and I'll apologize. But it mm-hmm. sounds like in the heat of the moment, she doesn't really like to admit that she's wrong. She comes off as the kind where she would say like, when I know I'm wrong, I'll apologize, but it takes her a very long time and a lot to, of hard thinking and being talked to realize it's her that. Yeah, she's wrong. Mm. You know, yeah, and even then, yeah, she would so probably find a way to justify, like, no, but wait, this is like I'm still right because it's very X Y Z, very Yui in that sense. Yeah, like, I was like- innocent in this. I was just caught up in the drama. And and like, and like I said, I want to give everyone here in the beginning before we've even seen the first episode. I want to give all these girls and even the guys like the benefit of the doubt. Could be I could be totally wrong here on any of this. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, it's just all happy sunshine and rainbows. And Care Bear stares when the house actually joins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to bring it back to something you mentioned earlier, Jack, uh, Risako is the one who is like, she liked this guy and everyone was saying, are you sure? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, he's the best looking guy in the world f- to her. Oh, you know? that was so nice to hear. Yeah. And she comes off definitely as the kind of person when she falls for someone, that person is her world. Like, that's it, no matter what. Which can, tunnel that. vision. Which can be both a good or bad thing, because it's like this that that classic, unconditional, unrequited love that everyone wants to covet, right? But at the same time, it could be like if she falls in love with the wrong kind of guy who like is actually a dangerous person, maybe. Uh, but she refuses to see any faults, perhaps. That could be iffy. 
We'll see. Mm. Yeah. We'll see. Mm. I I am encouraged though by like she seems very attracted to people by what's on the inside, probably mm-hmm. looking for someone with a similar attitude that's also very Genki. I love that word. Mm-hmm. Um rather than sheer looks, which I think is one of the things that hampers the pureness of Terrace House sometimes. It's like they're not going to get with him. He's not the best looking guy in the house. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. But to me, there's a point of attractiveness, okay, of level of attractiveness, where once you cross this certain point and you're so attractive, it's like kind of diminishing returns. Like, I don't feel like I, th- I feel like to me, there gets to a point where I stop trusting people. If they are like too good looking, too uh, popular, and too influential like, based on their looks, yeah, like too like you mean like too high maintenance? I don't know. Maybe I've just dated a lot of Scorpios in my life, and they're just not to be trusted. <laughs> wow, that is the <laughs> whitest thing I've heard you say. It it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I mean, I don't know. You guys ever run into that where like you meet someone that's just on a crazy? They're a crazy outlier. They're just like yeah, so no one, attractive, and then they're just tend to be like kind of ugly people inside. No one else but me. Oh, well, I no mean, one yeah. trusts me because I'm so beautiful. Yes, <laughs> well, let's ask Daily. Let's all ask Daily. Daily. Well, but we can't trust Obviously. her. Well, no, let we us can't. give us a, give us a window <laughs> into this world. You can't trust my answer. Yeah, give us a window a into burden. this world. <laughs> it's a it's a burden. It looks <laughs> it's an honest so to good God. looking. Yeah. No, it's uh, if I remember well, I mean, right, you, I think there was like a study done about that of like these really? people rated like pictures of people like and they'd rate their attractiveness and then they would also rate like whether they would trust them. Mm-hmm. And like there was kind of a coral. Uh, correlation there of the more attractive they are the less people trusted them good so it's not just me i mean there's a point there's a sweet spot but there's a point man yeah yeah i think i think everyone in their lives has met those people that are like so attractive and they know it right and they they kind of use that to skate by yeah Mm. and it opens doors for people i mean that's just the fact of the matter it does open doors yeah i mean think about how many i mean on terrace house alone we've had so many people that are models Right, like mm. they're literally the door that opens. Yeah, Terrace House is model biased. It absolutely is. You yeah, are definitely. way I more mean, likely gen- to get in the show if you're a model. They generally get good-looking people on their show, or famous people. Yeah, or both. Or and, and both too. Or yeah. los dos. Yeah. Yes. But I I have a good feeling about this group of girls as far as even though. In with the exception of Kauri, we we have you know people who are very, I guess not fitness trainer isn't necessarily super looks based, but there's there is some focus there. Mm. As yeah, far I, as because she she does body shaping classes. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's really cool that the producers are. It seems like they're trying hard to get a diverse cast this time around. Now I've only seen three of these people, but the what these people do is some of the most diverse cast of girls i've yeah. seen on terrace house so, so far i mean you have an yeah. illustrator you have a gearhead you have a fitness trainer who also dabbles in parkour like <laughs> you know all, what i'm saying very like, interesting they're like, all, all yeah, very they're all, interesting stuff they're all driven in something and they're unique, right and i and i appreciate that yeah and i'm interested yeah. in what all of these girls do and so i'm i'm curious to see how that's going to progress over the course of the show what kind of shots we're going to get how much we're going to see of what they do and how of course how they interact with the, the guys in the house too from a romance each standpoint other. from yeah. a romance standpoint right right now again this is day zero right i'm i'm rooting for calorie mm. that's who i'm rooting for yes. right now the other yes. ones i just kind of want to see what happens you know, right they have now. time yeah yeah they've got yeah they, but i'm rooting for calorie i like the way i was rooting for subasa in a way early on here we'll see this could all change after the first episode by the way yeah i for me i want i want kauri to be happy i want her to become armand basically i don't well, i don't necessarily believe that she is the kind of person who needs to have a relationship to be happy right i think it's mm-hmm. it's more possibly the pressure right of everyone else around her is in relationships getting married having babbies Maybe she's feeling that pressure. Those bad. Those bad. Here's the thing. My baddies. final thought on Kauri is that there's no way possible she can be more boring than Lo- Lauren Sai. So wow. thank you. <laughs> Rude. Oh, take, That's what take, I'm saying. Wow, I like Lauren. She's nice. No. I thought you, were we watching cool. the same the, the same, same show? Shame show. It was a shame yeah. show. Shame when, on you. When Lauren was on there, it was a shame. <laughs> Rude. 
Sorry, Lauren, if you're listening. No, I, I'm not apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said no she's not listening But hey, no you're just not La- apologizing Lauren don't wow. listen to him we still want you on the show If you're listening uh, 100%. Um, I don't know I guess of the three I want to throw this question out there at Isaiah Before we, we wrap up here Of these three girls who do you predict Will leave first and there, there's like Really no argument to bolster this or not I'm just oh. very curious mm. Leave first um, I'm going to say Okay I got an answer yeah, call him. Uh, Haruka. Mm. She's gonna, gonna drive say, away. I think I think she I think something happens where she gets into it with someone, maybe Rosako. You know, somebody gets into it with someone, either that or she Drama feels very, drives her away. Mm. May, maybe that, or literally drives her yeah. away. That's um, the name of her Corvette drama. Drama. Ah. Streetcar named drama. Uh nice. Or she feels very um, constricted in in Terrace House. I I want uh, Haruka to be the first one to leave, just because I want to hear that engine. Oh my god! The, the episode she leaves is just twenty minutes straight of her revving the engine. <laughs> you see a shot of like flames blowing out of her muffler. <laughs> yes. Oh, the, the <laughs> pops and crackles. Oh, yeah, man. Yes. I feel like I feel like Risiko is gonna leave first. I feel like. She's going to be quick to fall for someone. Oh, and maybe. And hopefully that works out and that they leave as a couple. Mm. Yeah, I feel like Kaori Ka- mm. is the most likely out of the three to be the person that's kind of just chilling. Interesting. Mm. Part yeah. of- we'll see. I can't wait to come back and see how wrong we were. <laughs> to take her time to fall in love. Same. Especially since she's looking so long term. Yeah. I would mm. say of these three, I think... Haruka might like I think my votes either on Haruka or Kaori Haruka mainly because she seems like the kind of person who when things don't go her way she bails which maybe is why she drives a fast car I don't know but she doesn't seem like the kind of person who would want to stick around to make things work especially with these with these young 20 something year olds I'm just gonna go play golf with my friends she doesn't you seem know. to have a long rope for bullshit. I will yes. say that Haruka, like she's mm. not gonna put up with mm. any bullshit. Right? I, we don't know if she's gonna get any. Good for but her. Yeah, oh. yeah, for sure. Stand by your, uh, stand your ground. Right. So that's part of the reason I think she might leave first is that her bullshit meter is gonna fill very quickly, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm out. I'm, I'm, not, I don't need this." Yeah, I I'm hoping. See that. I, I mean, obviously, Terrace House as a show, as a series worldwide, has just grown mm-hmm. exponentially since it first came out. So way more people know about it. Way more people are familiar with it. I'm hoping that the the whole starter cast here, boys and girls, just have a better idea of what they're getting into. And so I'm hoping that, you know, they, they just grow close together and they kind of stick as a group. I hope we, mm. we wait a long time until someone leaves and let, let them kind of really build strong bonds um, because usually, you know, that just is seems to be more the exception than the rule. And so I just want to see a group of six awesome people that are totally different that are friends for a really long time Yo, on the show. I just thought of something cool that I really want to see. I want to see Kaori work and collaborate with either Haruka or Risiko or both. Because could you imagine, like, Risiko's trying to work out this cool new, like, parkour uh, sequence, right? And then she asks ah. Kaori, like, can you illustrate? So I, I, I want to see it in third person. I don't want to like, oh, God. you know, could you maybe draw something that I can try to match? Right. I, just oh, thought of something I love cute. it. I just thought of something. I love it. What if Risako parkours on the hood of Haruka's Corvette and then it's a drama? That's the drama. It's the it's the parkour incident. She like she uploads you know, like, it for YouTube. Vo- the rivet on her jeans like scratches mm. all across the front. And then, and then while then they're talking about that fucking deal, Kaori walks in and is like. So should I not bring up the hand holding incident? Oh, and then no. everything blows up. And uh, it's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Guys, we've seen too much. No, I think we've watched too much Sheriff's House. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. We're bit. in too deep. Um, right now. Yeah. I don't have any more final thoughts on these three girls. I think I'm very excited to see where they'll go. But for now, I'm willing to wait and see. And I'm very excited to dive into the guys. Yeah. I'm dive really into excited those to dive, yeah, dive, dive into those head, guys. Head long, head yeah. first. I will always go head first. Into the guys, Robert. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, do y'all have anything else you want to add on about these girls? These girls? Or no, gonna... I just want to start watching girls. this damn show already. I've been waiting so long. Same. You just whistled. <laughs> Did I whistle? Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> well, All the dogs have... that are listening to our podcast, now their ears just perk. Let, let, let this be a PSA, kids. Wear your retainer after you, after you have braces. 
I will say do that. I I know a few people in my life that are pissed that they didn't do that now. So that's good advice. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yes. Or else you'll be whistling like me, a whistling fool. I don't. I don't do it. Uh oh. Do it daily. You'll Uh-oh. regret it later in life. Uh, so that about does it for our show on this weird retainer <laughs> note. Um, yeah, keep your dental hygiene up, kids. Same. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please feel free to tell a friend. We're gearing up into this awesome new era of Terrace House. This Terra is house. Whatever. We're gearing into a new se- uh, new series, new segment, and it's a good time to let more people know that this is a great show they should keep their eye on on Netflix, right? Uh, and if you don't want to tell a friend, maybe tell a stranger by leaving us an iTunes review. It'd help us out a lot. Um, you know, we're a very independently run show. We do everything ourselves here. So every bit of support is very much appreciated. Uh, if you have Gracias. any questions, comments, or theories about uh, Haruka or Risako or Kaori that you want us to know, and it isn't spoilers, because if we get spoilers say, in our inbox, yeah. I'm going to be mad. Yeah. Let, let's I, keep in the comments too on the YouTube guys. Let's try and keep it spoiler free. Let's just do everyone a service here. because yes. A lot of people already know what's happened. Yes. So uh, if you have anything non spoiler you want to tell us, please email any and all of those things to us at questions at Terrace dot com. You can catch us next Tuesday where we're going to go over the guys. We're going to do the same procedure here. We're going to uh, watch the interviews translated by Costco subs and watch those chins and shin shots translated by Costco subs to get hopefully a deeper understanding of the guys before we jump into the actual live show. Uh, and just one last shout out again, Costco subs, you guys do the Terrace House God's work. Guys, every day is another day closer to September 10th. It's a Terrace House holiday. Holy shit. Same. It's been too long. I'm excited. Yeah. And then so and then excited. we're going to hate the wait for part two. But you know what? It's a wait that we're willing to do. Um, and we're going to leave you waiting for next week's episode. This has been Tadaima. Thanks for listening. Itekimasu. You can email us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com, follow us on Instagram at Tadimagram, on Twitter at Tadimapod, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube at Tadima, a Terrace House podcast.